everybody, and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Now we do by Disney, or can look as film, whichever way you slice it. Legends. Today, again, I have a very short video for you because we are basically just comic book, comic book, comic book, comic book, comic book. And with comic books, I usually have less to talk about than I do with novels, so that is how it is. But eventually, we will get to a novel. There is a novel coming up. The, the episodes one to two, you know, in that in between time frame, there's only like three novels, so and a young adult novel series. But um, we are on today. I'm talking about the Hunt for Or Singh by Timothy Truman, which is Star Wars later redubbed Republic for the Clone Wars issues twenty eight to thirty one, and then we have uh, Heart of Fire short story, which was in Dark Horse Extra, and then also Darkness by John Ostrander. Uh, which is issues 32 to 35. Now, I think these both are fairly uh, adequate because at the time of recording this, and by the time you're seeing this, this may be November, actually, by the time this comes out, but at the time of recording, it is October. And you know what the month of October is? It's spooky season. So how peculiar that I make it to these particular stories at this time. The Hunt for Aura Singh... Um, we pick back up, we take a break from Quinlan and everyone to come back to Kiata Mundi and Ashrod Het um, and other Jedi um, as Aura Singh is just massacring a whole bunch of Jedi. And you start off with seeing a couple of these, you know, no name or named Jedi, but Jedi that die, that die off in the beginning of it. And it's, um, it's very disturbing. I, I want to go as so far as saying scary, but it is very like on that spectrum of like more horror-esque at least in the beginning um and i really enjoyed that and i think that works really well for the month of october um it, it seems like aura singh is very much the general grievous before the clone wars in a sense that you know well she actually is a force user but um you know there's there's sith lords at this time we have palpatine we have darth tyrannus currently of course they're in, they're in the shadows they're in secret but the ones that the Jedi are actively seeing, we have we have Aura Singh, who's super cool. Um, later on, we have you know General Grievous, who doesn't have the Force, but he kills many many Jedi. He's known as a Jedi killer. In fact, in the same way that you know, I will add this to my collection. You know, with a, I was a terrible voice for him. For General Grievous, you know, he collects Jedi lightsabers. In the same sense, so does Aura Singh. After every you know, Jedi she kills. So it's in much the same way, kind of like a proto General Grievous. But but I don't have any spoilers to say other than, you know, uh, not, it's not even really a spoiler. There's, a lot, there's some good character development um, for Ashrod Het and <sighs> and the Dark Woman that we got introduced to before. And it's overall a good, you know, series. I don't really have anything spoiler-wise to really mention, but... We also have a Heart of Fire short from Dark Horse Extra. It's literally three pages. It's fine. It does. Is, is it going to detract if you don't read it? No. Is it a nice little supplemental edition? Sure, because it has the girl that you see at the very beginning of the Hunt for Aura Singh. She's there talking to Quinlan. So now you have the two stories connecting right there. Um, so yeah, that was kind of cool. Then we get to Darkness by John Ostrander. perfect story for October. The Anzati. Now, I don't know if you guys, for those who have been subscribed to my channel for a while, have actually sat down and watched my reviews, you know that I hate, I think probably the scariest thing in all of Star Wars is in this comic series. And I hate them. I hate them. Them. Like, imagine actually existing in a universe where these things can suck you dead in the night. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't look pleasurable, you know, like, there is vampire stories where they, like, kiss your neck or whatever. No. In this story, we have the Anzati. Now, I don't know, again, for those who don't know what the Anzati are, let me just give you a little, a little reference point. Think vampires except that little tendrils come out of their cheeks and they put that thing up your freaking nose and suck you dry until you die if that doesn't terrify you i don't know what will 
but they want your brain juices. Um, this also follows the story up with um, having um, Ayla Secura return. So that's really cool. Ayla Secura is a big thing in the Clone Wars. And of course, uh, George Lucas liked her because she dies in Episode 3. We get to see her death. <sighs> On screen, which actually makes, you know, every story with her a bit more sad, knowing what happens to her down the line. But, um, there is, of course, a happy ending for this series, of course. This is before episode two. Um, one kind of spoiler, which I guess I'll save for the end. It's not a big deal, but I thought it was a really interesting thing. So I'll just mention it at the very end. But overall, these, these two comic series were a lot of fun. I really enjoyed them. John Ostrander is the greatest comic book writer for Star Wars. Every time he makes a comic, it is just pure gold. And if it's not pure gold, because sometimes there's a fluke, it's still not bad. It's just decent. It's either fantastic writing, fun story, or it's okay. But you never have a bad thing by John Ostrander because John Ostrander is the MVP of comic book writing along with Jan Derisma, however you say her name, being the perfect person to do art for uh, comics in my opinion. I, I absolutely adore, I love the way that they do art in this series. I love it. I love it in Legacy. I love it here. I'm all for it. But that's pretty much it guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up. Shrink up a ton. And may the force be with you.